The Wizarding World of Hogwarts Legacy got its next big showcase from Avalanche Games, and it's nothing short of incredible. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, and welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Today, we dive headfirst into the December gameplay showcase and dissect every detail you have to see to believe. The November showcase left us on the edge of the open world, ready to be explored. The team didn't miss a beat, and we start our journey right where we left off. We're not wasting any time and find ourselves blasting through the evergreens on an old broom fit for the 1800s. This is one of the big features we wanted to see in action, and to be honest, it's not that exciting, but I'm not sure what I was expecting. You're able to upgrade your broom's capabilities in Hogsmeade, mainly speed and fly height, but the broom seems to merely function as a tool for immersion and convenience. It's important to note there is a stamina system to the broom, and as they explained, this is at the early stages of broom technology, not where we're used to in the modern day of Harry Potter. There doesn't appear to be any special functionality other than getting from point A to point B quickly, but we did learn that cosmetics can be applied and swapped at will after they're obtained, but that's about it. Magical Beasts, on the other hand, well, they look incredible. We did see the Hippogriff, a pre-order bonus, by the way, which can be used as a ground or flying mount. The team's approach here was to allow Flying Beasts to serve as a seamless transition from ground to air, but can't reach the top speeds of a broom. Personally, I see these fantastic beast mounts being utilized much more in my own gameplay over the broom, but that's just a gut feeling. The experience of flying around on a Magical Beast just has a more mystical appeal to me, but I'm excited for both nonetheless. In a real showcase, we got to see the world littered with points of interest, including small towns or hamlets. You'll notice these areas are populated with markers which provide the player with gameplay opportunities, such as puzzles, secrets, or vendors. The plan is for these to connect thematically to different gameplay loops and bring the experience into one cohesive world. We also noticed the flu network at some of these areas, which is nice to see as quick points of travel. As you progress throughout the story, you'll experience day-night cycles, as well as season changes that are confirmed to have an impact on the gameplay, such as items or quest availability. This feels like an excellent way to highlight the passing of time, amps up the immersion, and is just one more way for the team to bring the world to life. Hogwarts Legacy Combat has remained the highlight of discussion amongst the fans and community, and it's honestly something I can't stop thinking about. While a full spell list has yet to be confirmed, we finally got a glimpse into the Dark Arts, something we've covered here on the channel before. Keeping us on theme, you travel through the Forbidden Forest to the Dark Arts Arena, where you're given a preloaded book of dark spells to test out on waves of enemies. Unfortunately, we don't get to see an exhaustive list of spells, but right out of the gate, we see the infamous Avada Kedavra Curse, or the Killing Curse. I wasn't sure how they were going to gatekeep this, as it's such a powerful spell, but they seem to just keep it behind an appropriately long cooldown. True to its nature, it seems to be an instant kill, even working on things as large as mountain trolls. It'll be really interesting to see the full spectrum of use for this spell and how the team handles things like bosses and higher health enemies. As combat evolves, we have these green X markings left on enemies. These are confirmed as curses that essentially link enemy health pools and end up sharing damage between marked enemies. You can imagine that this not only unlocks a great deal of combo potential as you build out your arsenal of spells, but may also function as another puzzle within combat to conquer some of the more difficult encounters. In the previous showcase, we were teased with what was speculated to be the ancient magic bar, and here it was explained in full detail. You gain charge of this bar at different rates throughout combat, the most effective way being via combos. Enemies also drop blue magic essence, which you can pick up to fill up your meter even further. After filling up at least one bar, you can use an ancient magic ability that performs a high burst of damage on your chosen foe. The spell effect is dependent on the type of enemy that you're targeting. Potions and utility are also on full display. We see the use of stone potions giving you stone skin, thus allowing you to take more damage, as well as a focus potion which is used to decrease the cooldown of your spells. We're not entirely clued in if there are any per battle limitations on potions, but I immediately thought how OP this could quickly become if you can just endlessly spam things like cooldown potions to cast Avada Kedavra every 15 seconds. I'm sure there will be something in place, but we just weren't told in this showcase. Finally, we saw three utility items in the form of magical plants. The Chinese Chomping Cabbage, which when placed, attacks nearby enemies, the Venomous Tentacula that acts as a turret shooting nearby enemies with acid, and the infamous Mandrake stunning enemies with a piercing cry. If you're anything like me, you find a combat style, and you'll likely stick to it. 
Well, the team wanted to give players opportunities to get out of their comfort zone with dueling feats. These are small goals within the arena, challenging you to try different spells and abilities. It's a nice touch and should make for a fun experience, and who knows, you just might find something new to weave into your arsenal. Now that we've seen the Dark Arts, we do need to address the darker business model. Everything we saw around the Dark Arts arena is extra paid content not included in the base edition of the game. If you only plan to purchase that base game, you don't get any of this. Even the Thestral mount you saw summoned before entering the arena is part of the Dark Arts pack. Oh, and just to add on to that, the Hippogriff you were flying around on earlier, yeah, that's also a pre-order item across all versions of the game. If you pre-order the Deluxe or Collector's Edition, you also get 72 hours of early access to the game. This is just a clear attempt to push people towards that Deluxe Edition. But at this point, why not just make the game $70 and give people all the content? Or better yet, provide it all at the $60 price point and leave cosmetics as premium perks. If this were a DLC a few months down the line, that would be a different story, but it's not. And I'm sad to say, I'm not a huge fan of this tactic. This next section is gonna get a lot of people excited. We finally got a much needed look into the Room of Requirements, the personal playground for players. This is a player's housing dream come true. The space is yours to command as you see fit. Want a completely different architecture? Wave your wand and make it happen. A place to sit and relax? Boom, done. Or you just wanna change the color, size, and arrangement of pretty much everything? It's got it all. For minor changes to complete cosmetic overhauls, this room is yours to do with as you wish. You'll even be able to manipulate the utility stations which directly affect your gameplay. These utility stations are used to brew potions, raise plants, and we got an especially long glance at the loom or gear station. As you progress, the room of requirements will expand in new rooms and areas, unlocking different stations, one of which is the loom. This gives you the ability to customize your gear properties to fit your playstyle and needs. This also doubles as a transmog station to change the look of your gear at any time. You'll notice that the materials required to change these gear properties come from magical creatures such as mooncalf fur. Enter the beast care loop. As you explore the world, you'll encounter these magical creatures and be able to take them under your care. Here we find ourselves caring for a Graphorn, Mooncalf, Niffler, and Neasel. As you care for these magical beasts, they'll provide you with their respective materials that you can then use at the loom. We also saw a glimpse of automated ways to care for your beasts such as the auto feeder and toy box. Finally, this space also has a seemingly endless amount of personalization. Arrange and resize trees, rocks, benches, and more to make this space look and feel like your own home. We also noticed that each beast seems to have a gender. Oh, and did we mention you can even name each beast? A great personal touch to round out a space that's meant to be truly yours. So let's talk about one last thing, a little extra surprise at the end of the showcase. Our character is pulled into a book, clearly resonating with dark energy. We can only imagine there is something related to Horcruxes, since this is similar to how Tom Riddle's diary pulled Harry in during the Chamber of Secrets. We know this isn't directly related to Tom, as the game takes place well before that storyline, but this might be some sort of tease on the journey you'd take following a darker path. There you have it, all we learned in the December gameplay showcase for Hogwarts Legacy. From combat to traversal, exploration, and personalization, we're really seeing things come together as a cohesive experience that pulls you in and never lets go. Things continue to look better and better, and we're excited more than ever to dive into our full hands-on coverage in February. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the transparency the team is providing is incredible. The fact that we're getting live gameplay that looks polished and cohesive and not just pre-rendered footage is great. We still have plenty to see and with only two months to go, I fully expect the team to dial up the marketing and bring things together with at least one more showcase. So what were your observations about the gameplay? What stood out? What were you hoping to see? What do you still wanna know more about? Let us know in the comments and if you found this update helpful, as always, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.